Hi everyone, welcome to this video. I'm gonna be sharing all of the books that I read in November. I read 11 books, so it was a good reading month. Um, yeah, lots of good books to talk about, so I'll just get started. I think I'll just talk about them in the order that I read them, or possibly by genre, actually. I think I'm gonna do it by genre. So I'll start with like Christian contemporary romance, cause you yeah, know, that's my genre. So the first book in that genre that I read was called um, All That Really Matters by Nicole Deese. I gave this five out of five stars. I loved it. <sighs> yeah, luckily my library got it in. This is a 2021 release and it was great. This follows a girl who's like basically an Instagram beauty influencer and she you know is living the influencer life um she's really major on instagram so she's pretty famous i would say in that world and she's trying to get a deal her manager wants her to be on this new i'm pretty sure it's netflix show um so that she's either a contestant or a host kind of forget i think it's a host and but she needs like some more experience because the show kind of centers around helping um youth that need help and she has no experience in that. So the manager's like, find somewhere to like volunteer to like up your resume basically, and you should have no problem getting this um, show. So her brother is a pastor, or he like works at a church. It's kind of fuzzy, <laughs> it's, it's fine. Um, anyway, she goes to her brother and she's like, is there somewhere I can volunteer? Like, I wanna do more and you know, she doesn't tell him that she needs this for a show. And so he's like, well, there is this, like youth ho house that um, houses youth that need help and I'm friends with the guy so I could, you know, send, them, send you their way. And so she's like, okay, I'll do it. So she goes to this place and immediately she like connects with the secretary and it's like a good interaction. And then she starts like Instagramming while she's there and the guy like walks up and is like, excuse me, what are you doing? No filming, whatever. And anyway, she talks with him and he's like, no way, like this is not gonna work. He's a love interest, by the way. And she like really tries to convince him. She's like, no, really, like I can do this. I will be a good asset and whatever. Um, you know, it all goes, whatever. He says no, but then later he says yes. So she ends up volunteering at this house and that's what the story is. It's following her, um, how she, the people that she meets, the, the youth, um, her growing relationship with this guy, and kind of her rediscovering her value as a person beyond her looks and beyond Instagram. Um, she is in a relationship with her manager and that kind of has a thing that happens. And she's just kind of rediscovering her purpose in life and her faith and it's beautiful. Like such good and relevant topics. And yeah, I loved it. It's definitely has like more of a girly spin because she does talk about like some of the products that she's into and like um, how she Instagrams and stuff. Um, she also has a YouTube channel where she vlogs and like does videos. So um, yeah, it was like really cool how relevant it was to today. And I loved it. Uh, I was super into it. More than just like, you know, kind of the surface Instagram stuff, getting to know these kids and how the house works it was very inspiring and I just, I was really into it. I really liked seeing all the workings of that and um, you know, the drama with some of the kids and it was really cool. So I thought it had a great message. I loved it, would highly recommend. Okay, next I reread My Hope Next Door by Tammy L. Gray in anticipation of reading the sequel. So yes, I did reread this. I read it for the first time in April or something of this year and I loved it. Again, it's so good. This is, I just love Tammy L. Gray. She is a really good romance writer. Um, this one, again, follows a girl who is a new Christian and she's trying to get her life together and her mom has health issues. So she goes back to her hometown to try to help her parents. Her parents are not Christians. They have a very toxic relationship. So she's going back into that situation. It's hard for her. Um, she's got a lot of messy past things that she has done when she was living there and she doesn't really want to face it. Um, then the neighbor of her parents is the love interest. His name's Asher. He 
is wonderful. He's the pastor's son, um, but he was kind of involved in a little bit of a scandal. So he's not currently going to church. He's like angry at the church and he feels hurt. So um, it's how they connect and their story and how God redeems all of it. And it's beautiful. So the sequel is called My Unexpected Hope. And this follows the best friend of the main character from My Hope Next Door. Her name's Layla. Um, and she has a romance. Um, she actually, she has an ex-husband who is a bad alcoholic and he went to rehab a couple times and um, it's the story of their relationship. And this one's definitely messier. It's, it's harder to read because it just, addiction is so, so sad and so all-consuming. And this book really explores that. And I was really into it. I really liked it. I liked how she wove faith into it as well um but i feel like made it realistic it wasn't like um it fixed everything right away and yeah just seeing the workings of the relationships between everyone it was messy and i actually enjoyed reading about that so yeah so i ended up giving the sequel four stars because i definitely didn't love it as much as my hope next door but i still am so happy that i read it and that was great. So then in this same genre, I read Her Hope Discovered by Cynthia Heron. This is the first book in a trilogy series, not sure, but um, I got sent the ebook by the publisher, so thank you for that. And this follows a really cute town, um, and in this first book, you follow a girl who's recently moved there. She bought a house and she is changing her life. She used to be like a big businesswoman in Boston, but she's moved away from there. She wants a fresh start. She broke up with her ex and she's ready to have a fresh start. Um, but then at the very beginning of the book, her one of her tires like gets messed up and so she has to pull over on the highway. And the guy that stops to help her is um, a single dad of two little girls. And he helps her and they have a spark right away. And then he like finds out that she's moving to the town. So he's like, oh, like I can help you then. Like I'll, you know, drive you wherever you need to go. And so he ends up like really helping her. And she's like, wow, okay, thanks. That's really nice. And he takes her to her house and it turns out it's the house that his father-in-law used to live in. So this guy is a single dad, his wife passed away and you kind of learn about that. He's got a lot of trauma from it. And you just follow this girl and she's like settling into this house. And then the main part of the book is the guy's nanny um, has to go to the hospital for something. And so he has no replacement. And so the girl actually volunteers to be his new nanny. Um, kind of in return, he'll like do work on her house for like cheaper. And so she ends up getting to know his girls that way. And then they develop a relationship through it. Um, so the first half of this book, I loved it. I was really into it. I really liked it. It just was such like a, a wholesome, happy, nice story. Like this girl was getting to know the, the little girls and they were so cute and I liked their relationship. It was um, believable and I just was like really into figuring out how this is going to work because the guy still had a lot of baggage from his wife passing away. And the girl had baggage too from her family. Her mom kind of sucks. So yeah, it's all of that. But then for some reason, I felt like it kind of went on too long. And some of the things that came up as issues in relationship, it just like, it. I don't know, it just didn't hit me right. And I kind of got bored and I ended up skimming some of it. So yeah, like, a little bit it fell flat, but it still had such a strong start. So I definitely want to read the next book. I wanna see um, how this author kind of improves over time. And if that sounds like a good story to you, I would definitely give it a try. Okay, on to the Christmas books that I read. So the first one is The Christmas Heirloom, and this is a novella collection with four different authors. And I really enjoyed it. It was like, it was really good. Um, the standout is actually the Christy Ann Hunter story which is the first one um i really liked it it uh it was sweet i don't know it was just written really well like so like it follows the story where uh this girl is um what do you call it she's an escort but not in a 
bad way, you know? Anyways, she is like hired to be the friend of this like elder woman and this is set in like the 1800s. She's at a like a party for the family and she's playing the piano and the family starts like saying, oh, we kind of want to move this older woman out of the place she's in and kind of like kind of send her off to die basically. And the girl is like stops the piano and stands up and she's like, how dare you guys? And she, from the beginning, you know that she is like always quiet. She never speaks when she's with the family. She just kind of like keeps to herself. So the fact that she like had an outburst like that, the whole family was like silent and stared at her. And one of the older sons in the family always had an interest in her, but he was like, she's like, never talks and I don't actually know much about her. So whatever, but I'm kind of interested. And then when he saw how she like got so animated, he was like really interested again. So he starts visiting them a lot and you see the girl does have a personality. She just like doesn't want to deal with the family. So she keeps to herself, but with just the elder woman, they're, they're like best friends. Yeah. And then the, the, so the grandson of the elder woman comes and visits a lot more. And so he gets to know the girl and it was just like a nice, you know, story and had like some sadness heart to it at the end and it was great so that one stands out the most yeah but I would recommend the whole book I thought it was great so really nice Christmas stories in that one then I read 10 blind dates by Ashley Poston and if you saw my vlog for it which I'll link down below didn't like this book <laughs> I give it two stars um probably could be one star to be honest but mostly because Okay, two things, and it's exactly what I said in my reading vlog, but um, first of all, the insult, this girl's ex-boyfriend, just too much. I think they insult him with rude words that I just wasn't comfortable with. Um, they just called him names that I just think it's like unnecessary. I didn't want to see that because ultimately he's a teenager, you know, like he's not going to be perfectly selfless all the time and so that was one thing and then really the main thing that like made me almost want to dnf the book was on one of the blind dates this girl goes on they end up going to a movie that is very inappropriate <laughs> i didn't say the word in my video my reading vlog either because i don't know if i'm allowed to say the word I don't know how that works with YouTube, like censoring stuff, but anyways, whatever. You know what I mean. A uh, very sexually inappropriate movie. To have that in a YA book and like, it just was so inappropriate. I, I was very appalled <laughs> to see it in this book. So it turned me right off. And um, for that reason, I would not recommend this book. And even like kind of the whole thing, the end romance and stuff um, was no big deal. So yeah. That was a letdown. Okay, next I read Christmas Angels by Nancy Nagel. Um, I did enjoy this one. It didn't blow me away, but this follows a girl and a guy. They both are bidding on the same like kind of bed and, bre bed and breakfast building. Um, the girl wants it because her grandparents used to own it. And then the guy wants it because he just like loves the history around it and wants to keep the land and keep it intact. So it works out that the girl won because she wants to do the same thing. So he finds out who bought it and he's like, oh, I actually know this girl from childhood because the girl grew up in that town. She just moved away. So he says, hey, I'll help you because I wanted to buy this anyways. So they end up like working together, um, repairing this bed and breakfast in thing. And yeah, that's basically the story. And then like rediscovering their feelings for each other. The girl was a little bit annoying because she like wouldn't accept his help for some things. And I just thought like, dude, just accept it. He's being nice, you know? Um, but I think that's a problem that a lot of us girls have sometimes. We're like, no, we can do it by ourselves and we don't let men help us. So that was kind of annoying to read about, but I guess it's kind of realistic at the same time. So, okay, then I read A Christmas in the Alps by Melody Carlson. And this one was interesting. Um, a lot of history and a lot of like French history in it because this girl, um, her grandma, passes away and leaves her a note that says, I've left you a treasure in my old hometown in France. Um, you should go find it. That's my dying wish. And so, so she's like, okay, over Christmas, I will go do that. On the plane, she ends up sitting next to a guy who is also headed to France and they totally hit it off. Um, she is very afraid of flying. So he like helps her through that. They have a connection. They actually exchange phone numbers. 
but then for a while he never contacts her she's kind of like oh like I thought we had a connection but whatever okay so she's in her little French hometown and then somehow I don't actually remember how but the guy ends up showing up in the in the little town and I think he just remembered that that's where she was and he's like hey like I tried contacting you and it never went through like I think I got the wrong number and she's like oh so it wasn't like a creepy thing um it, it totally made sense to me when I was reading it so they end up being in the same small town together and she's like discovering all about her family she meets her great aunt right her grandma's sister and there's so much drama around that but it was very interesting also there was a little bit of French in it which was fun because I got to like practice if I even know what I'm talking about when I'm learning French Overall, the family history was was the main part. I actually found like the romance took a back seat and wasn't even like the best part. <laughs> and like I slowly stopped losing interest. I slowly lost interest. There you go. And, yeah, uh, I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. Okay, finally one to hold up. Um, I did finish Hidden Christmas by Timothy Keller, and I loved this. So impressed. The way that he spoke about each aspect to do with Christmas was beautiful and so theologically perfect that I um, I would read this again. Like there was there's some deep stuff in here and I really enjoyed it. So yeah, this is right up my alley. I love theology and this uh, this hit it. It was great. Okay, um, I also finally finished this devotional. It's Embraced by Lisa Terkurst. There's a hundred devotionals in here. I started this in August and on and off I've been reading it, but I finally finished all of them in November. So this was excellent. I loved pretty much every devotional. I've like tabbed some of my favorite ones. Um, some of them hit so perfect on the day that I read them. It's just amazing how God does that. And I just love the way she writes. She's so honest, so raw. Um, I loved it. And this was actually a gift from a subscriber last year or maybe even the year before. And I finally read it. So thank you so much for sending this. It blessed me a lot. So yeah, I would highly recommend this like as a Christmas gift or something. Okay, and lastly, I kind of want to get it. One second. Okay, um, so I actually read almost this whole book. Um, I'm counting it as read. I put it on Goodreads because I was like, you know what? I spent a lot of time reading this book. So it's kind of a textbook, but uh, this is one of the books that I used to help write my essay on evangelicalism <laughs> um, for my class. And so this book is called Who Are the Evangelicals? Tracing the Roots of Today's Movements by Derek J. Tidball. Um, yeah, so it's annoying. Why is the sticker like right over the title? But um, that you can see that better there. Um, yeah. So this talks about every aspect possible to do with evangelical Christians and how we live, the history of us, everything. Who like calls themselves evangelicals, where it started, um, what do we even believe? And after reading this book and like writing my essay and stuff on it, I, I affirm that I am an evangelical and I believe in what like the truth that evangelicalism holds but this book definitely opened up a lot of issues within evangelicalism where it shows up in churches in own personal lives and in christians and it made me very aware of how diverse it is to be an evangelical because you can interpret things very differently so this definitely informed my faith a lot and I actually kind of want to buy this book. It, it really showed me that there's actually some scholarship that's written that I think people not going to school should read as well. And I wish there was like more opportunity for Christians who aren't going to go to Bible school to learn this stuff because it's so important to be aware of our history so that we don't repeat it, but then also so that we continue to do the good things that have been done in history and also just to like have a better understanding of even what your faith is and how you can talk about it better with people yeah i'm really into this stuff i loved it uh it definitely made me kind of think you know maybe i do want to go to school again <laughs> um i've been thinking about like do i take another class do i just like quit it and just look for a job i don't know i don't know 
my class is ending on a really good note. Um, I had class today, it's Tuesday, and um, we talked about the book of Philippians today, and I just love it so much. And I want another chance to learn more. And so we'll see. I, I definitely could see myself taking more classes in the future. Um, probably not in this next semester in January, but in the fall, I can see it. I can see it. So yeah, we'll see. I will pray a lot about it and I'll probably tell you guys because that's what I do now. So um, thank you for watching this video. I hope you guys got a lot of recommendations, a lot of good books, and that is everything. Wow. Um, happy December. So excited. Um, I'm not doing Vlogmas, but I will be putting out a lot more videos than normal just because there's a lot that I want to do. Um, some weeks we'll have three videos a week, some will just be two, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!